All right, so this week we're gonna take a look at converting a two-dimensional logo into 3D, all right here inside of Photoshop CS5 Extended. So I have here a logo, it's a simple, let's say it's a sports team logo or something generic like that. And I wanna go ahead and give it a, a 3D look to make it a little bit more interesting. Well, first off, I need to go ahead and extract this from the background. Notice we're sitting on a white background. So quickly and easily, I'm just gonna go ahead and use my magic wand tool here and go ahead and click in the background area. Since it is all one continuous solid white background, it'll make it easier for me to select the background and then just flip the selection around to my subject. So I'll just click once in the background and do make sure up here in the options bar that your contiguous setting is checked on. Otherwise, it'll go ahead and select other white areas in the logo that you don't necessarily want. So we've got the background entirely selected. Again, we need to flip the selection around to our logo. So we'll go into the select menu and go here and choose inverse and now the, the logo itself is selected. So I'm just gonna press Command or Control J and that's gonna put the logo up on its own layer and there we have it. So now we need to ro reload this uh, shape, the shape of this object as a selection. So I'm just gonna hold down the Command key on Mac, Control on Windows and go ahead and click right on the layer right there. So with the selection active on my logo, we're going to 3D to Repousse and choose Current Selection. And what it's going to do is go ahead, and go ahead and apply an extrusion to this graphic element and then open up the Repousse panel as you see right here. So if I rotate this around, you can see the extrusion applied on here is a little deeper than I really want it to be. So we're going to go inside the Repousse panel here into the extrude section right here and just change the depth setting to, let's go to 0.2, make it considerably thinner there. There we go. That's looking a little bit better. So I'll click the home button uh, to bring it back to the original position and we'll go ahead and click OK because that's all we really need to do here in the Repousse panel. So we'll go ahead and click OK there. Now, you may not may or may not see this, but there's a tiny bit of anti-alias edging going around the edge of the uh, graphic here. And that has something to do with, uh, one thing is the type of selection we have, which was a marching ant selection, which tends to leave some anti-alias noise around there. But we also, um, if you remember, brought this from a transparent background. So some of that transparent background may be showing through just a little bit if that selection wasn't completely perfect. And that's obviously due to the anti-alias uh, setting. So what we need to do is inside the layers panel, we've got two layers that contain our 3D object. We've got the extrusion material, which is the side, so those gray sides, and then we've got the layer one, which is the front face art. So I'm just gonna double click on that layer one and it opens it up as a separate document, very much like a smart object. And I'm going to put a new layer underneath the current layer here. So just hold down the command, uh, command key or the control key while clicking the new layer icon. And we're gonna go ahead and fill this new layer with black. There we go. Now you'll notice real, if we zoom in close here, the edges of this graphic have a tiny bit of that anti-alias noise going around there. It's like a little, little tiny halo going on. So to take care of that, we're gonna go into the layer menu, go down to the very bottom, and it goes off screen here, but it's there, it's uh, matting, and then choose the fringe. And um, here I'm just gonna set the width to around three and then click okay. Notice those dark edges just disappear. Looking much better. Now I'm gonna go ahead and close this and save the changes. It's gonna update inside of this original graphic art and you'll notice there's a before and after. Notice those edges got a little bit darker taking care of those little light edges there. Very nice. All right, so now all we need to do is take care of the edges. Right now it's default, uh, by default is filled with gray, just uh, uh, basically defining the shape. But I wanna put a sort of metallic edge on this just to give it a uh, much more interesting look. And uh, I'm actually gonna use a file that I've downloaded. This is a stock image and it's just generic metal texture that I've got right here. It's got some reflections going on, but this is gonna be perfect for the metallic um, reflection I wanna add to the side of this logo. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that. To apply it, we're gonna go and open up the 3D panel. And inside here, that's, it's trying to close. Right? Try to open up mini bridge there, there we go. All right, so here in the 3D panel, what we're gonna do is go over here to the third icon over, which is the materials section. And here it breaks down each element or each mesh surface of our object. We've got the front inflation, the front bevel if we had one, the extrusion material, which is the sides, back and back inflation. What we want to do is affect the layer one extrusion material. So I'm gonna highlight that, go down here to the environment setting, and we're gonna go ahead and do a load texture. Just go on the menu there. And we're gonna locate that metal texture I just showed you. There it is, metal texture, click open. 
And we're not going to see any immediate change because the reflection setting here is currently set to zero. So if it's set to zero, we won't see anything. I'm just going to use the scrubby slider, position my cursor over the reflection name, and then drag it all the way to 100%. And then notice what happens to our logo. The reflection is now there. Also, if I grab my 3D rotate tool and move the logo around, you can see that the reflection moves with it very much the way a natural object would. If this was a real metal object and I moved it around in space, it would reflect the environment in very much the same way, giving my logo a much more interesting look. So all we need to do now is just put it on a background. Here I've got a really cool background element. So we'll go ahead and take our logo and drag it over. And That'll show up right here in our new document. And I can go ahead and use my 3D tools to reposition this. Notice when the art is animating around. Now, if it seems a little light, here's a cool trick what you can do to adjust that. Back in that material section on the uh, layer one extrusion, go right here to this diffuse setting. And notice there's a little color swatch right here. Well, if I click on that and make the color a little bit darker, let's put a little bit more blue on it because it is sitting in a blue environment there. So if I go darker, you'll notice that air, the ambient light around it gets a little darker too. Or the overall effect gets a little bit darker. So a little bit darker of a blue color there. Now we're getting a much more intense metallic reflection on the edge of our logo here. So if I move it around yes, yet again, we can see that defined edge much better and looks really, really interesting. Now a couple last minute touches, or not last minute, but just a couple of last um, final touches I can do here is one, add a couple of layer style effects. The first thing is I'm gonna add is an outer glow. Set my glow to white, really punch up the size here, and then change the blend mode from screen to overlay. Really intensifies that background back there, giving it a much more interesting look to it. Go ahead and click OK on that. And one last thing I'm going to do is go ahead and render it because even though we can see the reflection and it looks rendered, we're not seeing the shadows that would be cast by this object either. So if we go into the scene section here and go down to the quality menu here in the 3D panel, let's just click on this first tab, the scene section, go down here to the quality menu and choose ray trace draft. It's going to do a render of this 3D element. So it's not only going to render those reflections, but it's also going to render any other, ref notice that the, it re the logo is reflecting itself from this top part into the side face here. It's also rendering the shadows that would be cast by the object as well based on the lighting in our whole setup here. So quick and easy way of taking a simple two-dimensional logo, applying a few simple 3D tricks here in Photoshop CS5 Extended to get a much more interesting, really cool 3D logo in no time at all.